Hello and welcome to Sport This Morning. I'm Cecilia Omogwe. And I am Tayo Sala. All, All right. right. Coming up on the program this morning is the top of the table clash. The top two in the Nigerian Professional Football League will be facing off this weekend. I'm talking about Remo Stars and Rivers United. Should be a very explosive matchup between those two sides. Uh, we've got a comprehensive preview of that game and the other matches on March Day 9 of the Nigerian Professional Football League. Also on the program, Rafael Nadal is one win away from winning the record 21st major. That was after he clinched his place in the Australian Open final with a four-set victory over Matteo Berrettini. The end of the road for Matteo. He struggled a little bit, but then that was all he could offer. Also on the program, yes, all-star starters ready. Ja Moran, he's making his debut for that. Indeed. Andrew Wiggins is also part yes. of the expert. And he's going to captain LeBron, LeBron James, James and KD, Indeed. Kevin Durant. Congratulations to Ja Morant and Andrew Wiggins, first time All-Star starters in their NBA career. we got details of that and more later on on the show. But before then, yes, it's time for the AFCON segment. Well, all right, let's get into the business of the Africa Cup of Nations. All right, first, let's take a look at the fixtures for today. Uh, for tomorrow, we're going to be talking about the games for Saturday and, of course, the games for Sunday. The games for Saturday, you'll be having a Gambia and Cameroon in action. Gambia making their debut. And, of course, Cameroon, the host nation. Also, Tunisia and Burkina Faso will also be in action on Saturday. But then this is how you can be a part of this program. Yes, Nigeria, they are out of the Nations Cup. But we've still got the host nation there. And, of course, seven times champion, the most successful team at the Africa Cup of Nations. Egypt, they're still in the work. So tell us what you think, who is going to win the Nations Cup? Will it be host nation Cameroon? Can they get past Gambia and move into the semi-finals? Of course, get to the finals and win the trophy. Or will it be the perennial champions, so to speak, talking about the pharaohs of Egypt? And Burkina Faso and Tunisia will also be in action. Will Tunisia be able to add to the trophy they've won before? So talk to us on the program this morning. And this is how you can be a part of a sport this morning at channelstv.com. You send us an email or you follow us on Twitter and tweet at us, channels underscore sport. So tell us what you think. All right, I'm not just going to be doing all the talking alone because we'll be having uh, Lofty, uh, Lofty Wada joining us from Tunis to talk about Tunisia and Burkina Faso game. And also, Jide Olalino, he's also here. Today's Friday, so Jide is right here. And of course, we're going to be asking him his prediction about Nigeria game. It just didn't come to pass. Um, Ty, I reached out to him. I'm kind of sympathized with him. It's very good to have out. Gotta, gotta Jide, look how are you doing? Other. It's the first time since Nigeria lost out at the Nations yeah, Cup. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to be alive. And it's good uh, to be with you guys. And yeah. thanks, Ty, for reaching out. Um, yeah, we gotta look out it happens at times, you know, yeah. football. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. So, uh, well, I had work away you for trying like, to have kind of you know, but, but life, is, life is funny at times. I, I, I'm the kind of person who uh, uh, try to tell people to try as much as possible to temper their expectations. Yeah. But you, I think I went out overboard this time. For whatever reason, you got so excited. You were trying, you were calling me oh, to order. Yeah, you were I was trying to make you relax. Order. <laughs> yeah. What well, happened? I, I even asked you just before the show was over, are you, are you are confident you sure? about yeah. that game? I will mean, always remember, in my dreams, I will always remember that you were telling me, are you sure? Are you sure? No, no, it happened. Come on, guys. These things happen. I mean, if all your faith, I mean, if your faith were very, very, you know, as small oh, as what possible. What a space. <laughs> got to do with this, Cecilia. This is not about <laughs> fate. This is not about fate. Anyways, um, uh, Nigeria is out of the competition and the show goes on, mm, obviously. So mm -hmm. starting from tomorrow, we're mm -hmm. going to start seeing the quarterfinal fixtures. Uh, the first one is going to be between the host nation, Cameroon and Gambia. The Gambia giant killing run continues. Mm -hmm. This is another opportunity for them to slay <laughs> another giant in the indomitable lines of Cameroon, mm. uh, the lowest ranked team in this condition as the Gambia, mm -hmm. obviously. Exactly. Uh, they've got a very good opportunity to sting uh, the host uh, nation, especially if the host nation keep playing the way they've been playing mm -hmm. or play the way they played against 
Cape Verde yeah, okay. in their last mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. I mean, against Comoros. Uh, Comoros, Comoros, Comoros yeah. uh, without a goalkeeper, mm -hmm. uh, with a red card early on in the and game. Exactly. And they struggled. If they, they struggled. do the same thing against the Gambia, they might just be uh, stunned. Mm -hmm. exactly. stunned. And, uh, yeah, yeah. But, and uh, that could, uh, well, I don't know, that could define the championship for them. And yeah. uh, I don't know what the reaction of the local fans uh, in Cameroon would be if Gambia. Uh, throws uh, the host nation out. But let's look at uh, the, the fact that uh, the Scorpions have been on a Cinderella run. Of course, they've been taking everyone to the cleaners. And um, you see, the, the thing about this uh, Gambians is the fact that uh, the massive support they are getting and what that is doing, what they've been able to achieve their debut, uh, on their debut, mm -hmm. and what that is doing back home. Um, I'm talking to a lot of friends back in Gambia, and you could see that uh, the it's all even about dreams for young people now. Mm. I think football is go never going to be remain the same in Gambia after this because uh, you could we could see uh, people you know talking about how uh, valid, it's galvanized the nation, how valid exactly galvanizing the nation, how valid dreams are. People keep dreaming, and you know. So uh, I think that is one thing that will, that will, that will really motivate these guys, the Scorpions against the indomitable lion. Like you said about the performance. You could see all the traits, uh, traces of uh, the fact that Cameroon at some point can, can really falter if they, you push, they have a team to push them mm. to the limits, you know. And if there is any team that can do that, I think this Gambian side will do that. They have no respect if you see the way they play. Yeah. Most types are, you're shocked that. Are these guys playing like yeah. as if they've been around for a long time? Yeah. And uh, um, but but, but uh, let's see how it goes today at the Duvala Stadium and uh, tomorrow, tomorrow rather. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for me, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to call this. I'm going to sit on the fence, on the fence. for this because. Okay. But but yeah. uh, but it's looking like something strange might happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we've seen a lot of the strangest thing happen in this championship. So okay. we should be used to it by now. All right. Indeed. So uh, um, yeah. We've got our two other guests that are ready uh, to join us uh, via uh, Zoom, and they're going to be helping us uh, with this uh, preview of the quarterfinals of the Africa Cup of Nations as well. As, as well. Uh, that's uh, we've got a Tunisian journalist, uh, Luke Tuwada, is ready to join us. We also have our NPFL analyst that uh, is going to be talking AFCON. He's back uh, very early. That was in the plan uh, for <laughs> Fisayo Diary. But it's great to have you guys. Good morning, Luke Tuwada. Good morning, Fisayo. How are you guys doing this morning? Fine things, Good morning, guys. It's nice to join you on this, yeah. this morning. <laughs> for sorry, I was just saying it wasn't the plan for you to be home this early from Cameroon. Mm. Yeah, it happens. Um, of course, that's football. We saw the black side of football. Football can mm. be white and black. On normal days, when everything go according to plan, it's white. Yeah. You know, all the things you plan for from the dressing room, from the training sessions, you get it on the pitch. That's white, but and another day when you meet unexpected circumstances, mm. that's the black side of it. Life has yeah. to move on. Indeed, you, you can't, you can't uh, es escape uh, you know, neither of these uh, two uh, situations. Uh, Fisai, I'm going to stay with you and, and talk to you about this Gambia and Cameroon game. Uh, the JFF, they've done the unusual thing of coming out to say that their team, all 27 players and staff, have passed the COVID-19 test. They've come out and put it out there. But what do you think is going on? We've had stories about Cameroon, you know, and COVID and all of those things. But the JFF have come out two days before the game to say all their staff and players are COVID negative. Well, <laughs> maybe uh, that's them trying to take the bull by their own. And mm. that's um, maybe before they get to Jaoundé and they get another test conducted <laughs> on their players. Uh, because honestly, it's becoming a source of worry yeah. because it's been a, a coincidence too many for many of Cameroon's opponents. Mm. You know, we, we knew what happened to Burkina Faso. We knew what happened in the case of Ethiopia. And now in the second round, the Comoros. one against Comoros was, was really farcical, really. You know, mm. so um, a lot of people are beginning to uh, have these, uh, and, and you cannot blame them for, for having such thoughts that mm. perhaps the hosts are taking these extremely too far. I know mm. someone like, like Lutfi is aware of many of the things that happen in the Cup Champions League and the Confederation Cup matches as well. You know, all these shenanigans being put up by host teams. You know, it happened to I think Rivers United when they went to Tanzania to play mm. against Simba. So 
you know, it happened to Plato United. And so it's becoming um, a, a case of maybe some of some of these host teams are trying to use to exploit the COVID situation mm. to gain on due advantage. But now that the Gambia Football Federation has come out to say that all their 27 players are fit and negative, we see. We will see what happens. The game Fingers is on crossed. Sunday, I believe. Then we 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 see what happens before tomorrow. Then. Yes, tomorrow. All right, tomorrow. Cecilia. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, let me go to Lofty first because, I yeah. mean, he's, he's, he's the man on the hot seat right now. Tunisia will be facing Burkina Faso. Yes, Burkina Faso haven't really been a team to say they are contenders for the title. They're just here to complete the numbers. That's what most pundits are thought when they qualify for the Nations Cup. Now, for you, Lofty, I mean, Tunisia have been having a good run, Yes. A good run because they got through the group stage. Yes, they finished. They just had three points, and then beating Nigeria more like made them favorites now because Nigeria was a tournament favorite for the title against Burkina Faso tomorrow. What are you guys expecting from the game? Well, uh, I think we should uh, first of all uh, target the semi-finals now, as we have, uh, with all my respect to Burkina Faso, we have eliminated a bigger team in terms of prestige and in terms of talent. So now I think if we are eliminated tomorrow, it would be very embarrassing. It would be sad, and it will. And we have also uh, counter counters uh, to settle, if I can say, because in 2017 Burkina Faso eliminated us at the same stage in 2000 and. Um, in 1988, they eliminated also at the same eliminated us also at the same stage. So we have some uh, counters to to settle, if I can say, because you know I don't think we have ever beaten Burkina Faso in an official game. We played yeah. them in uh, yeah. in the in the qualifiers of the of the World Cup in 2010. They beat they beat us uh, in Tunisia and we drew at Ouagadougou. So we have some counters to settle historically speaking, and we have a huge opportunity also. Uh, on the present moment to make it a, a second uh, successive uh, AFCON semi, which would be very formidable. And uh, and let's hope we will do it because uh, we will have, uh, most, most of our players are, are returning uh, logically okay. tomorrow and we'll have a, a COVID test, the uh, last COVID test uh, today. Okay, interesting, because I was going to go there. You know, you have most of your first-team players not available, the coach not available, and yet you guys were able to produce the players that could defeat the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Now, with all the players back, so it simply means a win is what you guys are expecting against Burkina Faso tomorrow. Well, with the with all the players back, I think we there are still two players who are doubtful, but they were tested in uh, on uh, on Monday. So basically, if they were tested positive, they could be able for the the game of Saturday, as as they change the rules in the middle of the competition path, they will they would have to to isolate for five days. So yes, I think we will have uh, most of our starting line back. The the coach, no, there have been no. Uh, no indications if the coach will return or not, but uh, the, the the players, the material should be there, and uh, there should and uh, and yeah, logically we, we should be ninety percent logically uh, uh, at full at full power at full power. So against uh, Burkina Faso. Yeah. All right. Interesting. It's good to note that. So, what would be a success for Tunisia at this tournament? Winning the trophy. Uh, I think the uh, semi-final would be formidable because, you know, we, uh, Tunisia, entered uh, a three-month period which has been crucial and, uh, you know, we reached the final of the Arab Cup. Uh, we lost it against Algeria, but if we reach the semi-final of AFCON and then we qualify for the World Cup as we have been paired with Mali, I think it would be an excellent uh, three months and uh, all the targets would be uh, achieved. So I think if we reach the semi end, you know, because after that, you know, semi final, it's uh, it's played on details, etc. So and, and you and there's no shame to lose, for instance, against the Cameroon, as I think we will face them or Senegal, Senegal, sorry. So I think yes, if we, we reach the semi and then we qualify good willing on March against uh, uh, against Mali for the World Cup, I think we would have definitely achieved the three great month and the, and the targets um, put by the by the federation even if you know they want always more the trophy etc etc yeah I mean it's a good one well thank you so much Lofty Wada for joining us this morning and all the best to Tunisia when the Facebook in a faster tomorrow thank you very much hopefully the, the win hopefully
<laughs> All right. After BTT spray goes, you guys just have to win. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it does anything for you guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if for uh, the team, the Saint Nigeria parking goes on to win the competition. You you just know that they're it's good like enough. But if they don't and they are bundled out in the very next round, they start asking it's questions. Psychological boost for them. Um, it's a for 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 the uh, Tunisians. For you. Uh, for, for, for you. Feel any better? Does it make you feel any better? Oh, wait, we're ready. Okay. Because Nigeria is out. Of course, it doesn't make it. It's gonna make me feel better. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna make me feel better. That it shows that now. they are it's just a... so good enough. They're better than us. So the when they get team. bundled out, <laughs> and the way they played, if they, they, they so continue painful. that way, of course, mm -hmm. for a team that played Nigeria with the play. maximum, exactly. Dude, they didn't that let us play. That we played on the ball. They are good. So okay. they're, they're, they're good. All right, Cecilia, okay. I, I, get, I get the message from Cecilia. Yeah, a bit of a uh, moral victory uh, for <laughs> you, the team that beat Nigeria as the champions, right? Yeah, you kind of feel better about yeah, that. Yeah, I feel so. better about that. I All just right. Fisaya, what do you think? Fisaya, what do you think? Yeah, pardon? <laughs> that if Tunisia go ahead to win? Yes, doesn't make you feel any better given the fact that they knocked out Nigeria. <laughs> Not precisely, but, you know, just like I understand what um, Cecilia is trying to say. Yes, we could easily say we lost to the eventual champion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but come on. Come on. We, we also want to be champions ourselves. Yeah. But Good luck to them, although I don't see them uh, getting past the semi final stage, just yeah. like Luchi had said. Yeah, you're right. Interesting. All right, let's go straight up to the other fixtures uh, for Sunday. Our uh, quarterfinals we have Egypt versus Morocco. That's a massive game, a derby. We also have Senegal taking on Equatorial <laughs> Guinea. Nisaya, how do you see that Egypt Morocco playing out? It looks like an explosive match in prospect. Certainly going to be an explosive one, although I must say the Egyptians have been a little bit reserved in this competition. Maybe that's due to the quality of their playing personnel. Kudos to the technical crew headed by Carlos Queros for trying to mold a defensively, a defensively solid unit mm. uh, when you don't have too much of a, a attacking threats. But for Morocco, we've seen that um, they've been one of the best teams in this tournament. They've scored yeah. the blue goals. Um, they defended well as well with their myriad of left left footed defenders <laughs> from from Naif Agued to Roman Seis to Marcina. Um, they they've been a very formidable team. And but when it comes to a derby between these two Arab nations, you don't know what to expect to really. Um, I, I think Morocco have been more decisive. Um, yeah. I think many other people will also agree with me. But True. This is a quarter-final game in a major competition. You, you, all the form, the head-to-head -head record, and you know the rivalry come, uh, the, the form and the stuff going to the dustbin, and the rivalry comes into play. It, 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 it comes down to who wants it most. So I no. think it's going to be an explosive game. But I, I think it, um, it might eventually progress because yeah. when you are playing a competition and you are very attentive defensively. Yeah. You have this tendency of, of going further than the exuberant side. Yeah, fair point there. There uh, from Fisayo, defense wins the championship. Uh, that's the message. But we need to go on a break now. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the last uh, quarterfinal pairing between Senegal and Equatorial Guinea. We're also be focusing on March Day 9 of the Nigeria Professional Football League. Join us again. <laughs> You're welcome back to Channel Sport this morning. Gide, over to you now. Egypt, Morocco, Senegal, Equatorial Guinea. Surely you're not going to sit on the fence this time around. Well, well I think for, 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 for Egypt, um, they, they have progressed very well. They, they kept improving. The, they the gained last momentum. Game, again, gaining momentum. Mm. Um, the last game against Cote d'Ivoire shows that they were all out. They, you could see how exciting the game was. Yeah. Until, yeah. And uh, they, they kept making incursion into the 18, you could see. And uh, I saw Salah playing in his, you know, normal free roll yeah. from the right and all that. So, um, against Morocco too, Morocco, that uh, one good thing I've seen Morocco do is that uh, if, it's game, uh, if any game becomes cagey, there's someone somewhere who could use his initiative and you get so magic. from uh, magic, exactly. So we, we're in for an exciting game, no doubt. We will see. For, for Senegal... So this is on the fence as well? Uh, uh, for me, one? I think <laughs> this time around, I'm going to go for Morocco, Morocco. because for, okay. of what they've done. And for the fact that uh, Morocco, consistently, we've seen them produce great stars. But mm. one thing is that when they get to the AFCON, 
maybe there's there's a psychological boost now. The chains have been broken. Most times they lose they lose out or they get out of this competition from uh, second round. But this time around they are in the quarterfinals. When it's, maybe it's one game at a time. Let's see yeah. how far they can go. But if they win eventually, I think they deserve it in the times in terms of the quality of side they are. Yeah, mm. uh, Senegal, Aliou Sissé. In terms of um, time has been given to Aliou. I think Aliou's been there for like five years now and with this kind of setup. And uh, they, started they started by struggling uh, until the second um, stage. They just had one goal. And you wonder, with the one goal, you're, you're the best tight yeah. in your, your team with one goal. And because, but uh, against this Equatorial Guinea, it's going to test them too. And uh, they might not be very lucky uh, mm. this time around. But uh, I'm, what, I'm really worried for what will happen, what will become of their manager, because he's gotten the, enough time. He's, and in terms of the quality of the squad that he's got, he has with him to do this job, I think he has it. Okay. So he's now left for, uh, for, the for the players to, to, the to deliver, come to the party. For the Equatorial and Guinea, the Guineans, yeah, this is like the third time they will be here. The last, the best they got was in 2017 when they hosted and they were fourth. I think right now they are in the quarterfinals. They want to, they are, they are in the quarterfinals, yeah. They want to do another one. Let's get to the semis again. Yeah. And back <laughs> to, right. to the COVID shenanigans we've seen so far. Like, you know, most times people say, uh, they have brought um, uh, the expert from Swiss. So if we're having this kind of, Coincidences. I, I don't know why. You think it's okay. a coincidence? Maybe it's just a fact. I think people are trying to read really really it into, into it. Maybe it's just a fact because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and just uh, say that maybe those players didn't test uh, positive and then they said the result was positive. Or maybe they're thinking, oh, it's a coincidence or something. But let's just leave that and mm. yeah. let's have the uh, Afghan segment here yeah. and go into Nigeria Professional Football League. All right, time to talk about the Nigeria Professional Football League match. Day 9 will get us talking. And of course, there are big games this weekend. Top 2 in the league will be in action. Uh, so MFM and Shooting Stars, Plateau United and Abia Warriors, Remo Stars and Rivers United, Wicked Tourists and Nassau United will also be in action. You have Aimba, Katina United, Heartland, Canopillas, Niger Tenendos and Aqua United, Sunshine Stars, and Lobby Stars will also be in action. For Shooting Stars, they were able to beat Quarry United coming from a goal down to win that game. Let's get reaction coming from that game. And then we'll go to Fisayo. We'll focus on the game between Remo Stars and Rivers. But that's, uh, but that's after we get reactions coming from uh, the game between uh, 3SC and, of course, Quarry United. Going down 1-0 at all, especially in the second half against a very strong side like Choir United. Naturally, it wasn't a good one. We felt the end has come. But because of the players, they showed character. They were resolute that today's game has to be a three-pointer in memory of our departed general manager. The players gave everything, like you could, you could see. They did everything on the field of play to make sure that the three points arrived at home. And we're very grateful for that. Yes. What I can say is that what has been happening to us since the beginning of the season is a situation that will form the character of the team. Twice we played at home, we had to come back from a goal down to draw the game. Today we went down again, but we came back and we won the game. Gradually, team character is being built. And we are very happy that today we are able to come back. Otherwise, the turnaround that we are looking for would have been something else. I got to you know, believe at the same time. But it's a game of football. So if it's not a hand, so anything can still happen. So I still give it to the boys. They came here to fight. We came here to get something out of the game. But at the end of 90 minutes, we were unable to get anything. So I think I praise 3 because even though when they are one down, you can see the seed that they want to you know, get it go back. So I blame myself, I blame, I, I, I blame the team because we lost transition towards the end. When it mattered most, we lost it. So it's a game of football, we go back and um, make amendments. 
All right, Quara United will be up against Gombe United at home. Hopefully, they can pick it up from there and see what they can do. But shooting stars will be in Lagos against MFM this weekend. Fisayo, I mean, big games this weekend. There's shooting stars, MFM. There's Rivers United and Ramos Stars. Uh, maybe I should start with the biggest one this weekend. No doubt about that. It's Ramos Stars against Rivers United. The best defense against the best attack in the league this season. Mm. Uh, two remaining unbeaten sides in the league. And of course, the second against first position. Um, this, these are two teams that have been very pleasing to watch this season. Um, easy on the eye football from both sides. They've also scored goals as well. You know, and we, many, many people have talked about Patai Shaw, the former Imba coach, being added to, Inba, to Rivers United's technical crew, headed by Stanley Eguan. That has brought the best of very good background of football from Iguma, for Iguma's side. So it's going to be a very dicey one. I uh, maybe because uh, I've been I've watched so much of Rivers United this season to rate them so highly. I think they will get some out of that game in Kenya. It's going to surprise a lot of people. But give it to Bring the Gubote and Remo Stars. Uh, they've been unpredictable, but they've been consistent. And Diopo has weighed in a, in a couple of goals. Dario Ojo has been a leader in the middle of the park. Nduka Jr. and Isa Ali have been exceptional in defense. And our goalkeeper, Kaude Bankoli, has been one of the best things to happen to the league this season. So um, I, I really envy those that, are really, that will be in the stadium on Sunday, right there in the Canada, because that will be the best of Nigerian league football. Mm, interesting. It's good to know you're saying that for shooting an MFM in Lagos, your thoughts quickly on that one. Yeah, because that, that, I think that's a relegation six-pointer early in the season. <laughs> MFM are at the basement side in the league. Shooting stars, we know their ambition is definitely to stay in the league this season. They've, they've only won two games out of eight, and they'll be hoping to get something off MFM, who have actually lost at least two home games this season. It's going to be feisty. It's going to be very interesting as well at the first in Balogun Stadium. But I think MFM should have enough. Because it's a new dispensation for them. Gabriel Alikra is back at the saddle. A uh, lot of administrative changes there and there. I think MFM should start this new dispensation with a winner too. Hmm. Interesting. So, battle of relegation. Uh, Jide is in the studio. Let me quickly yeah. come to Jide right here. I mean, it's just uh, these two teams are fighting relegations. I mean, already. It's already at, early after it's, March Day 8. Well. <laughs> um, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's uh, early in the day, really. But yeah. there's still much to fight for really but well you have to take your, you have to begin to really take your time especially when you start on this note uh, for, for for shooting shooting stars that victory against uh, was a moment of respite for yeah. them against Quara united oh, yeah. for mfm that rivers uh, the, 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 the 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 fact that rivers united came to lagos and won by three goals to one shows that uh, Lagos is no longer like a fortress for MFM. Uh, maybe because they changed it's from Agege Stadium. Yeah, it's not big for a long time. <laughs> Most times, you're at least sure that uh, there wouldn't be uh, uh, some maybe disappointing the, the, the level of performance loss. loss and consistently, they've been losing. It's like, you just... It's possible. You can't sit here some two seasons ago and say like uh, it's so you are so you are not you are you are, you are afraid for MFM or uh, they might lose this. You can't say Aimba that. But now come here. Rangers have come here beating MFM. Yeah, that is it's <laughs> it's, 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 rare, one but it's becoming yeah, consistent. Okay. Okay. So the way it is, uh, yeah, it's been one ups and now it's becoming consistent. So you are afraid to even call games like this again. Mm -hmm. yes. <sighs> so uh, I think the MFM need to get. This result because okay. you remember that they, they started um, at home, they started the season at home, and they lost to Remo Stars. Yeah. So, I think this is another South okay. Southwest Derby that you want to call it about. They think they need to pick, uh, pick a point. Points. So, right. if um, the change of personnel that we've had in terms of the, 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 the technical crew as well as the management is anything to go by, I think it should reflect on oh, the kind of uh, the, the, yeah, the, 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 right. the kind of. Uh, so the psyche, the, the place the team will be bring, bringing to, to bear this time around. All right, so they, they are under pressure to win that game. That's Seriously, MFM. They, they, the they are six points, to win. rock they bottom. Win. They need to start climbing the table. Uh, so we'll see how that game pans out over the weekend. Uh, we've got updates that are coming from the LMC as well too, concerning Heartland. Heartland. I mean, the story is that they've been given uh, close to 
at the end of close of business today, at the end of today, they want to see evidence of payment of their players, which according to them is actually overdue. So they got a letter from, uh, from Heartland, which was dated 11, you know, and they said, okay, they wanted them to respond, you know, giving them 48, uh, day, uh, 14 days ultimatum for mm -hmm. them to be able to clear all the outstanding payments. But it ended yesterday. yesterday. And of course, so mm -hmm. today, MFM, uh, LMC is actually telling <laughs> for them to pay, <laughs> to pay the dues. I'm, I'm reading this, I'm laughing because, I mean, how do you even start the season owing your players last season? Mm -hmm. You're bringing it into this season and then you're not being given ultimatum to be able to pay your players. And Heartland is owned by government. Is not a privately owned mm, yeah. football club. I think the, the privately owned football clubs are even doing better than the government. That's the question. That's the what we need. The conversation so what's we need to start. Doing? That what is the essence? Because the questions we will have to begin to ask people is that they are because it's even good that it's happening this way now. Then we need to take it serious. That how for how long are we going to be having? Uh, state-sponsored teams because you know it could it, it boils down to uh, parities. You know, most times government have parities. You don't. Know, some of the some of these uh, people, uh, football is the least on what they are thinking. And if well, how, for how long can, you we, can, can we continue like yeah, this? Yeah, so give, give it up. I, I, I don't know question. what uh, Hartland. Uh, for them, like you remember that I, I, while I was looking at the fixtures last week, I said I still wonder how Heartland is still getting very results. much in the <laughs> getting results still in the Premier League when people who are getting their salaries as at <laughs> when you are relegated <laughs> or struggling. <laughs> like Quarry United. I don't know. They, they deserve their <laughs> Fusayo, wages. Really. Fusayo, you, you get the last word on this. Um, I don't know if you have any updates. What you're hearing? Anything now uh, from the Heartland uh, camp? They've got until the end of today to provide evidence of the payments of these salaries. Do you have any updates from the Heartland camp? Are you hearing anything? Yeah, no, no update yet, but my gut feeling tells me that um, um, they will run Elta Skelter, pay like a couple of months salary before the end of the day. <laughs> you know, that's how many it's of our bad. teams do. That's, uh, that's why I agree with what Gideon is saying. If the state government cannot cater for the team, then disband the team. Let people go their way. There are, yeah. there are more clubs willing to take up this lot. But, you know, you are not ready to pay them, and you are not ready to give up this lot. It's, it's unfortunate. But Very. Uh, let's wait till the close of the day. But uh, I, I'm, I'm maybe I'm hopeful if they don't get to pay. And let's see a team get relegated in Nigeria League so that mm. we know that we are in for business. Mm. But other than that, based on what has always happened in this league, I think they will run here and there, get some millions, pay for like two months, show the evidence, and then they carry on, they come They're back to this again yeah. in two months' time. Rinse and repeat, right? R rinse and repeat. How, uh, how, how, yes. how much are we looking at? How much are they owing? Like, how, how many months' salaries? How many months? It, it, it's, it's countless, really, because you're <laughs> talking about yeah. from last <laughs> and And they keep season. registering, and they keep registering for new season, and they keep playing. Yeah, yeah. And, and LMC the, the is supposed to be... That aspect is that, our league players have sometimes failed to, you know, take the bull by the horn. Write a letter, copy the NFF to FIFA. They will ensure that they don't get to register players if you have lodged such complaints. But because when the players are, are told that, look, uh, if you do this, if you do that, then the players are scared. They don't get to file this appropriately. Um, it, it, it's really a sad comment, really. Mm. Indeed. Pisayo, uh, I want to thank you for your time. Appreciate your insight, analysis, always. Um, hopefully, we'll get you on very soon again. Thank you very much, guys, for having me. Cheers. All right, let's move on from the Nigeria Professional Football League. Uh, let's quickly go uh, to the NWFL Premiership. That's the Women's League, the top flight, where Edo Queens have started the season uh, on a fantastic note. And, um, you know, they won their last game as well, too. And the governor, not the governor, the deputy <laughs> governor, the man in charge of the team, Obviously, it's very delighted uh, with the performance so far. Yeah, I mean, when you have a team who've been able, they've not lost the season, they've won four, after six matches, 14 points, winning four and drawing two, then it tells you a whole lot how the team have started. Yes, they recruited well. Yes, their welfare is good, yeah. but then they are reaping the results. Indeed. Uh, and I'm sure that's why he's really excited this morning. Let's take a listen to him. 
Yeah, I'm so so super excited. Being the last game of the first round, and I was able to win, win convincingly. So I think it's a good game, and I'm happy about it. Yeah, because we, we were we were topping, and this this win is to make us to remain at the top. So and we believe at the end of the first round we will still be at the top. And then we are resting. The last game of the league is next week, and we are by. Even we have at least about two or three weeks and. Uh, Break after the break, even the first week, we are also by. We are also by. So we have a lot of uh, uh, time to prepare the, the team again ahead of the second round. Uh, that's our that's our aim, and uh, we are working towards it, and we believe we'll get it. Uh, we 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 lose to the to the better side. Seriously, the game was interesting, and we try what we could to get at least a point. But you know, in a game of football, all coaches want to win at all costs. You prepare your team for winning. When you turn to the other way around, you got no choice than to accept your defeat. We accepted the defeat in a good faith. But we know we are coming out stronger for the next match. No, this is just a trying time. There is no team without this kind of a period. So we are facing many challenges, but we know hopefully we bounce back strongly. So. Uh, we thank God for the match. Uh, you can see that the team is, uh, is gradually picking. We are topping the league now. Not just topping the league, but they have not lost any match. And uh, they are, they are, they are, the game is coordinated now. And we have a team, a very young team. In this, uh, the women league, I do queen it, they are the youngest. I can see how fragile they look, but uh, the good news is that uh, the fragile nature in them, the skill is more than what you see, and that is what they have just displayed today. Uh, they will be going on a short break, mid-season break, and I'm sure uh, during the break, the, the programs that I've seen that the coach has lined up for them will also keep them very fit to be able to sustain the momentum in yeah, it's all about sustaining the momentum for Edo Queens. Hopefully when the uh, second stanza of the season resume, they should be able to, well, maybe they are in Super 6, not just Super 6. Maybe they can win the title and represent Nigeria at the CAF Women's Champions League. That's the Why not? ultimate goal for most the of these teams. I think, the, yeah. It's, so funny. <laughs> it's not straightforward. You know, you still have to Super 6 and yeah. all those things before you become yeah. the champion. Mm -hmm. So it could it's be tricky. Impressive. But I, <laughs> it could be very tricky uh, seasons that they do have. I, I see it's caused a lot of argument back and forth about, you know, most times, especially for those who win the regular uh, season, season, they wa just want to win trophy and go back home mm -hmm. and celebrate. But most times, we've seen it's good for them, and though, even though some people don't like it, but that's good. You, it's not straightforward. You based, have to work out. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, based, based on what we've seen so far, uh, mm -hmm. Rivers, Rivers United, obviously, uh, the favorites are to mm -hmm. win the league again. Mm -hmm. Edo Queens look like they're yeah, they should be the nearest challenges. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're based on what we've seen so far. So, uh, let's let's they hope give they can run for their money. Yeah, That's let's good. hope they can uh, sustain uh, that challenge uh, until the end of the season. We need to go on a break. It's our final break. Then we'll come back. We'll bring you updates uh, from the Australian Open. We'll let you know all about Rafael Nadal and how is one match away from winning the record 21st major. Join us again. You're welcome back to Channel Sport this morning. I'm sure you just saw highlights of how Rafael Nadal made it into the final of the Australian Open with a four-set victory over Matteo Berrettini, 6-3, 6-2, 3-6, 6-3. And that's how Nadal is now one match away from a record 21st major. Cecilia Gide. What a game we just saw a few minutes ago. Rafael Nadal racing into a two-set lead and we mm -hmm. thought it was going to be a yeah. straightforward. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah, but then Mattel Berrettini, a lot of credit has to go to him. Showed mm -hmm. a lot of character in the yeah. third set. Won it 6-3. Six, uh, six, three. Three. And uh, yeah, we we'll say, okay, what are we going to do now? We're going to yeah. go into a few <laughs> sets. Uh, and Cecilia was praying <laughs> that that should not happen uh -huh. for whatever reason. She's a big <laughs> fan of Rafael Nadal uh, and all yeah. of that. But uh, Nadal... Steps up, uh, you yeah, know, top up the ante, mm -hmm. and in the, in, in the fourth set, got the job done. Uh, six, uh, three, just 19 and forced errors across yeah. four sets. And Nadal has been playing like a man on the mission ever yeah, since uh, it became obvious that 
Jacob and was going to come to Melbourne. I didn't want to go there, but of course, maybe that's one of the uh, what is one of the uh, things motivating him, and yeah, because absolutely. he knows that. Uh, the unfound terrible of yeah. uh, the, the game is not going to be, Australian Open won't be around and, the and it's not there. But good to know that uh, he's going to, if eventually wins this, good for him, especially yeah. for the season. Mm -hmm. The season starter and he's within days after, you know, he's gone through a lot too. Yes. So I think yeah, he, needs to, he needs some time of refreshing really. Mm -hmm. And I feel that uh, if he wins this, just one game, uh, um, just one game, to get that, yeah. I think making 21, yeah. mm -hmm. I think it's good. And the fact that it's not even play. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a hard court. Yeah, it's a hard court. court. So, so yeah. Yes, yeah. So okay. It's standing, where it's comfortable, so it's good. Standing between Nadal and history is Men the winner. Of the, yes, uh, the winner of the second uh, semi-final. That's between. going to, that, they, those guys are also going to be, that's a test anyway. Yeah, that's a you can't become event. a champion without facing, uh, you know, some great the tests. Best like the best that. That'll the best. Now basically get tests. Exactly, yeah. For you to become a champion. So, All right. uh, let them bring it on. All right, okay, indeed. let's leave tennis because we can spend one hour to talk about <laughs> Rafael Nadal. But when he wins, they will do that on Monday. So let's quickly go to the NBA and talk about the two games that were played early as of this morning. The Lakers losing without LeBron James. Of mm. course, the Golden State Warriors with the Splash Brothers back. Yeah. Yes, they got a nice victory <laughs> over at Timberwolves. Like, That's the result times. right here. Some sixes and the Lakers, yes, so 1 of 5, 8 to 7. This isn't just getting worse and worse for the early Lakers. Joel Embiid, he didn't make 43 points or 40 points this time around. He's got 26 of it. Mm. And of course, but then it was hot enough for them to be able to beat it. But then for the Lakers, LeBron James wasn't here. Anthony Davis was here his second game back, but then he got a game high of 31 points and 12 rebounds. That was good, but it wasn't good enough mm. to beat the 76ers who all. are flying. Yes, uh, fantastic victory for the 76ers. Let's get post-game reactions coming from the both coaches, Doc Rivers and Frank Vogel. Uh, him and Joel are really kind of working their little two-man game together pretty well. You know, uh, at the end of the night, they were trying to switch, didn't want to switch. Uh, Tobias started going slower to, to force it. So I, I loved how uh, they, in particular, just played together down the stretch. You know, I didn't know he made it until two seconds ago, and I walked in and congratulated him. Obviously, he was going to make it. Um, you know, but he's done more than just been an all-star for us. He's, he's doing everything for us on and off, off the floor, and uh, that's why we have the record. I mean, with all the stuff – floating around this team, we just keep winning. And a lot of that is uh, Joel's leadership. Well, we didn't play well enough offensively. I mean, Anthony scored the ball, Russell scored the ball well um, in terms of being efficient. But, you know, as a group, we didn't, we didn't move the ball well enough. We didn't put enough pressure on the basket. And, um, you know, we try to try to create too much offense on our own, you know, as a group. And, um, you know, we have to we have to put pressure on the paint with our movement, you know, and, and um, you know, I thought there was too much of guys trying to create it on their own. Uh, and then when we did, we, we shot poorly at the rim. We shot poorly on open threes, you know, and, uh, you know, you need everything you can get against a team like Philly. Uh, but we just didn't move the ball well enough offensively. Not good enough uh, from the Lakers, so that's what... Frank Vogel is saying uh, this morning, they're playing without LeBron James, of course, it's a massive miss. Yeah. And uh, LeBron is actually day-to-day -day with a sore on his, so we can't say for sure when he's going to be back on court uh, for the LA Lakers. The LA Lakers obviously will be praying uh, for a quick and swift return for LeBron James. Let's take a look at the top performers, uh, just the two of them. Anthony Davis, uh, 31 points, 12 rebounds, and... One assist uh, for the Lakers in their loss against the Sound Sixers. And last but not the least is Carl Anthony Towns, 31, 12, and 6. <laughs> so all two top performers, Cecilia, ending up on the, on losing, the losing side. side. When all you're right. playing against Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, combining for 11 three pointers. <laughs> all right. All right, let's, let's take a look at the all star uh, starters uh, for the NBA. The NBA all star game is just around uh, the corner. It's going to start on February 18th all through to the 20th. But we have our starters are for you yeah, in the Eastern Conference. Kevin Durant is the captain, plays for the Brooklyn Nets, obviously. It's going to be his 10th time starting. There's also DeMar DeRozan of the Back Chicago Bulls. Back <laughs> as, a, as an all-star, uh, fifth selection. 
He's having a fantastic season. Mm -hmm. 26 points, 4 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists. Uh, that's what he's averaging this season. Trey Young, second time All-Star, is averaging 27.7 points and 9.3 assists. Yanis, of course, the Greek yeah, freak. Expectedly, yeah, right. Of course. And Joel Embiid. Again. Career eyes in points and assists, 29 <laughs> and 4.3. All right. What a season is having. Let's and in the, the West. West. Of course, Captain LeBron is back to captain again. And Jay Wiggins. I mean... Uh, yeah, surprising, uh, yeah, somewhat surprising. Yeah, surprising, yeah, surprising. But then but he's been season. great this season. Yeah, yes, with the Golden State Warriors. Warriors 18 with, yeah. points uh, per game. That's oh. what his average is mm -hmm. this season. So. so Steph Curry, of course, expectedly is here. And of course, he deserves to be here. Ja Moran, mm. finally. Congratulations to him. First time so All-Star appearance yeah. and he's going to be a starter. Well deserved. Yeah, Nikolai Memphis Jokic, Grizzlies are third, are mm. third in the Western Conference. Yes. Largely... Uh, down to the him. play of Ja Morant. Of course, the Joker MVP well, is also him. on the short list. It's a fourth All-Star appearance. He's averaging 26.2 points, 13.8 rebounds, and yeah. 7.6 assists. So All those right. are your All-Star starters. Uh, the starters uh, for the 2022 yeah. NBA All-Star Game. Fan ballots. 50%, Cecilia. All right, Tyler, we need to go to the 50%. papers. Great. I like, I like the fact that the fans have... Fans voted. Yeah, for I this one. I think that's one. how Jamoran got the media as well, yeah. as well as current players. Yeah. All right, let's quickly go to the papers. Yes, we've got just uh, some few minutes to leave the studio. I'll start with uh, Complete Sport right here. Complete Sport. You have Napoli to demand 90 million euros for Victor Osime. This story is not going away. Apparently, maybe uh, what story? they want to... Get him. It was in the papers yesterday, story, and right now like, he's also making cause, the headline. Victor Simen, maybe he wants to leave Napoli. We don't know. When? Was, 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 and they want when? to cash out. Who knows? Summer, not now. Not January transfer. So... <laughs> Or maybe his agent wants to demand more money for him. Okay. And then they do that a lot. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's go to Sporting Life. Sporting Life is our next paper for review. The big story or the biggest story headline is the fact. Okay, it's not a fact, but yeah. that's what Sporting Life is saying this morning. And Gauvin remains Eagles coach. That's a fallout of the meeting between the NFF and the minister. Two technical reports expected on Sunday. Is this the way to go? And Gauvin staying in charge of the team? Uh, well... I, I think, well, where, do, where do we go? Yeah, the, do, do you want go? to, because the person who, uh, they actually announced, which I felt was a disrespect to him, be that during, before the Nations Cup started, was, uh, what's the result of that, of the person? It's, it's gone, it's, it's gone silent from that side now. Yeah, it's kind it's of gone, gone silent, silent. Because yeah. he's not really intimidating okay. enough. Right. I don't feel that's where we should go. If we right. don't want to go, that's not where we should go. All right, uh, mm -hmm. let me take the last one for today because after the last one, we'll just quickly take one or two tweets. Uh, Sporting mm -hmm. Son here. Sporting Son, Sports Ministry, NFF divided over Super Eagles' new coach. There you go. Dare wants a guavoin. No, it is Pesero. That's according to Amaju Pini. That's yeah, the what NFF, we have on Sporting Son. The NFF Son. All right? have got the uh, let me take this uh, prerogative to, uh, to choose who the coach is. Who the coach is. So that's, that's, right? that's their call, really. Not, it's not their responsibilities. I don't know. Interference. So why are we even having this conversation? Like, there's there's no need to have this conversation. Can we just move on? Because Ghana is actually waiting a match. All right, I'll quickly take this uh, tweet. Uh, one is coming from Noble Flyerman. He says, I'm still in shock about the exit from AFCON. I think this AFCON is going to North Africa this time around. And to be precise, please tell Pinnick to appoint a government as we do not want Pesero. Mm, interesting. Uh, Mustafa Mugua says, Cameroon will narrowly beat the Gambia, but I don't see them winning the cup. It will be Senegal or Morocco's year. Okay. Uh, Cameroon will, according to Dari, said Cameroon will win the match. Also, Tunisia will take the day. Mm. Chido one, thank you so Fingers much. Fingers crossed. Um, good. Good to be here once again. Friday. <laughs> yeah. Great to be around. Yes. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Yes. Thank you all for watching as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. I am Tayo Salam. I'm Cecilia Morve. Have a good weekend.